Today's a pretzel day. Hey everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And today's going to be a two-fold day. One, we're trying out how to make keto pretzels from the Keto Bread Book. And two, we're trying out this Peanuts pretzel machine. And in honor of that, I wore my Peanuts shirt. So first, unboxing, and then keto cooking. The other thing I didn't mention about this Peanuts pretzel maker is that I got it for $9.99 at the 99 cent store. Obviously not 99 cents. Obviously like 10 times that much, but it's still a pretty good price for this pretzel maker. I looked it up on Amazon and it was like 30 bucks. So let's open this guy up. So that's what we got in here. Do you have these instructions? That's some very basic stuff like this is the extension cord where you plug things in. This is a handle. Let's see. Oh, we do have a pizza dough recipe in there. Not pizza dough, pretzel dough recipe and how to make pretzels. Looks like that's what I'll be looking at. Oh, and some other pretzel recipes. Um, I'm going to try to make the keto one, so I won't quite be using this recipe exactly. Now let's get into this guy. Very cute. Pretzels. Basically, it looks like any old sandwich maker. This foam's just been pressed a little from being in here. Uh, it doesn't look like my pretzels are going to be very thick, very plump, because that's not a lot of space to be making thick pretzels. So, looks like they'll be pretty thin. Let's see. Looks a little dusty in here, randomly, or some little tidbits. I'll need to wipe those out, clean this off, spray it down, and then put some pretzels in it. Let's go. Here are the basic ingredients we're gonna need. Yeast, water, almond flour, psyllium husk powder, baking powder, cheese, cream cheese, one egg, avocado oil, for your hands, not for the cooking, but we still need it, according to the recipe, butter, and coarse kosher salt. Now the recipe only calls for one teaspoon of instant yeast, but my yeast comes in these little packages. I don't have a container, and the packages have more than a teaspoon, so I'm measuring it out, little teaspoon. There we go, one teaspoon instant yeast, and now I need two tablespoons of warm water. And now just mix it up. It says stir and combine until foamy, which is which it says is about five to 10 minutes. Um, after I started doing this, I realized that the directions also said to do this in a small mixing bowl, not this large one that I have. So learning from that mixing bowl mistake, I read the directions for the next one, which is in a medium mixing bowl, mix together your dry ingredients, which are one cup almond flour, one teaspoon psyllium husk powder, and one teaspoon baking powder. And does anyone know if I'm having this problem because maybe the baking powder is old, that it's just staying really chunky and hard to mix? Next, the recipe does call for one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese. I only have this Mexican quesadilla making cheese, so that's the one I'm going to use. The recipe now says to add in one ounce of cream cheese. Luckily, it's kind of marked on the package. I don't really use cream cheese a lot. Ah, it has a little open here, maybe like a zipper. This is really hard to open. I thought it'd be a lot easier since it says open here. There's no zipper on this. I guess you just open it and then it doesn't have a nice ceiling when you're done. So to use that measurement, I'm opening up the side. I'm marking where the one ounce mark is. 
opening it up, and then cutting from there. It's kind of hard to get this one ounce out. It's really creamy, which I guess I should know from the title, Cream Cheese. Next it says to microwave these two cheeses together for 60 seconds. And uh, there's some loud disturbing pops happening before the 60 seconds is up. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it because that was pretty scary. Whoop. It just popped out. And it says to microwave it for 20 seconds after this, after you stir it, but mine was pretty much already mixed and stirred. Didn't really need to be microwaved more. And it did say to do this in the large microwave safe mixing bowl, but since I'd already used mine to put yeast in, I had to use a little measuring cup. And that says to mix in the yeast, stir it up. And this was all supposed to be done in the large mixing bowl, but of course, I have to do things weirdly. Now add in the one egg, and it does say to beat the egg first. This cheese is just so cheesy. Get out there, tail. So you just beat the egg, and then pour it into the mix. And then continue to mix that all in. And now I decide to put it in the big bowl like it originally was supposed to be in. Now it wants this to be really well mixed in and then you add in the dry ingredients. Once it's pretty well mixed up, it says to start kneading it with your hands. So I did flour a cutting board with some coconut flour, so it's still keto. I just didn't want everything to stick to the board. And it does say to now use the oil, the avocado oil for your hands. And I obviously poured too much because I didn't measure it all. And it wants you to separate the dough into four different balls after you get it all mixed together. My balls of dough still seem to be really sticky, so I figured I'd roll them in some of the flour to help unsticky them. And now I know I'm gonna make need to make long rolls of the dough to put into the pretzel maker. And so I poured some extra coconut flour just in case I needed it on the side. So I just roll these out with my hands. The pretzel maker did say to make sure to spray the pans. I'm just trying one side first because I'm concerned that since it's made of cheese, it's just gonna be crazy and not solidify the way pretzels should. So just doing this one trial run. And let's see what happens. So we're just gonna wing it? There's a big difference between winging it and seeing what happens. Now let's see what happens. So first I'm just seeing that the light, the green light indicating that it's good to go is on. I'm gonna open it up. And um, not the worst, but I think maybe I'll leave it in a little longer. Here's my roommate's feet coming in. I'm presenting the pretzel to the roommates. And we're all watching it come out. Okay, so it's more solid than I thought, being that it's made of cheese. Lovely cheese. <laughs> so now we get to the next part, which is buttering the pretzels. It says to brush on the butter. I don't have a butter brush, I'm just using a spatula. And then after that, you just pour some salt on it. So no, uh, my roommate just wants a quick trial bite. And uh, I'm gonna try some too. And uh, let's take another bite for the other roommate. And now we're just deciding we're just gonna eat this whole first trial pretzel. We'll continue on with others. So after a few, I did pretty much end up getting the hang of using this pretzel maker. 
with this weird keto recipe. So these are the pretzels I ended up with. Um, the first one we ate already, but this is pretty much what it looked like, kind of caked over. But once I got the hang of it, I was able to make more pretzel-y like pretzels. After thinking about it and starting in on this, I was really concerned about the amount of cheese in these pretzels to use that little maker because to think of like when your grilled cheese melts over like this, I just wasn't sure how it would work because it didn't seem like the bread would stay stable since it was cheese. Oh. Oh, I don't know, lad. It's like no cheese I've ever tasted. I'll just do a little on-camera taste test real quick. Mm. So I was falling off a little here. So it doesn't 100% taste like a pretzel to me. It really tastes more like a pizza snack without the sauce on it. The recipe was intended to be used with little pretzel bites. So just little bits at a time, maybe it would seem more pretzely, but it doesn't have that same thick doughy thickness that pretzels do. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So keto pretzels, not the same taste as normal fluffy pretzels, but not bad. And the Snoopy, and the Snoopy pretzel maker, not the worst, but they were a lot thinner than I thought they would be. Like smaller, I guess. I was just expecting maybe this size, but fatter pretzels maybe. But that's okay. So I'd rate both of them like, okay, pretty good. I might be a little happier with the pretzel maker than I am with the actual pretzels themselves, but that's the keto's fault, not the pretzel maker's fault. And I would like to try sometime using the recipes that came with the pretzel maker. I was just so excited about my keto one and now I'm bored of making pretzels. So that will have to be a cooking adventure for another time. Well, thanks for being here with me, everyone. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your night. Pretzels, pretzels. Here's Katie. <laughs>